Hey guys, on here, we are back with episode four of The Flash. Last week, wrapped up our Mirrorverse storyline. Finally, Ava is out of the picture, at least for now. Who knows? She lived, so she moved on to bigger and better things. Um, Flash has a natural speed force, which I've still got plenty of questions as to how that works, but in pure Flash fashion, love saved the day. Um, I'm kind of sad that we ha got to, had to say goodbye to Earth... Uh, Prime Wells, Earth One Wells, the OG, the original Wells. And we never really got to spend time with it to begin with uh, so soon. Um, but yeah, it was still a pretty decent episode. I really liked it. Uh, I, I know some people had some problems with that episode, which I predicted as we were watching it, but I'm excited to see where it goes from there. There is still some strange things that Wells still is out there. Maybe it'll come back. There was that scene where he kind of, looks away from everybody on Team Flash and gives that, like, removes his glasses and a curt nod and then puts them back on and goes back to building the Speed Force in that moment. So it begs a lot of questions as to what's happening there. Of course, we got the tease at the end of the episode with the multiple callers going out into the world, which after some deliberation and some thought, it's got to be the other forces, the other natural forces of the universe coming out. I don't think it's the Speed Force. There is only four. Um, but I do think that is other forces coming to work and maybe Barry is the result of bringing these forces back into life, even though they should kind of already be there. So, um, so, cause I kind of already kind of have an idea because of some episode titles and some, uh, things that have come out about later episodes that I think that we're going to be going into some storylines from the comics that are pretty interesting. And I'm not going to go into it if you're not aware of that stuff. So I don't want to spoil it for anybody if that is where this goes. So that being said, I'm really excited to see where this new journey kicks off. What this new uh, fresh journey actually is. Since we're finally into the true season 7 at this point. which Because we were in these first three episodes, we were still living in the, the wrapping up the storylines from season 6 still. Remember guys, full unedited reactions are available for this over on Patreon, or if you become a member here on the channel, it gives you access to it as well. We're not just covering The Flash, but every DC Arrowverse show, uh, actually every DC show, when Stargirl, uh, Doom Patrol, all that jazz returns, we'll be covering those as well. Uh, we're also covering the Marvel stuff over on Disney+, Plus, as well as all the Star Wars stuff that's going to be coming after the fact. I didn't start my Patreon until after The Mandalorian Season 2, so that's not on there, unfortunately. Same with Cobra Kai. So, unfortunately, those aren't there. I think the first thing I started with was WandaVision and so forth. But everything from that point that started this year uh, past that is going to be on there. And everything going forward will be over there, unedited, for you guys to check out. But we're going to be diving into this episode. Let's go ahead and kick it into gear. Here we go. It's so weird, after all this, to actually see Iris and Barry well, the together again. Trip to Maui yesterday and mm -hmm. the fresh grapes <laughs> this morning from Paris. You, Barry Allen, are the most romantic husband ever. Satellites say it's just a small everyday earthquake. Hmm. Usually we have to kiss first to make the ground shake. <laughs> Wait. Hmm. <laughs> oh. But I wonder if it actually could be the speedster thing, which is not what we kind of talked about. We did kind of talk about that, but kind of wasn't the consistency and the idea that I think we were going to go into, though. We'll find out. Runkadelic, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, we got jitters it. run. Yeah, you're ordering jitters run. I like jitters. <laughs> we should do jitters. One latte coming right up. Think it a double. Chester's such a good addition to the team. Caitlin's okay. I'm the reporter, not the story. This time you're both. Look. I like that. There are people out there just like you. You're their voice. So try again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is he like dicing him with cards what oh show me the carnage Good damn, bro. 
<laughs> now for my greatest trick yet. Absolute suffering. <laughs> Let me make sure I get this red light right under my face. He's a guy who has a theatrical flair. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Abracadabra is back. That, that's a pretty vicious escalation. And what's that thing back there got to do with it? It doesn't matter. Cadabra picked the wrong day to come back. Hmm. Stephen, Alice, thank you for agreeing to do this interview with me. Um, are you sure I'm not intruding? Of course not. We're all in this together. Central City strong. Hmm. Yeah. Were you abducted as well? well? If you ever want to sit in with the group. No, I, I'm fine. Thank you. Mm. You don't seem like it. <sighs> Damn. We could do release date order or machete order prequels after Empire. <laughs> Wild man, and I love it. Then the Jedi Council has spoken. It has. <laughs> God damn! I want just like a spinoff of just these two hanging out. Seems like spirits are up again, which is good. At least, maybe not so much Barry, but everybody else for the most part. The second one downtown. Which means that's where Cadabra's headed next. He's just putting up these you bad dragons everywhere. Oh, this is goes in the field. Yes. I see you're finally Mecha vibe. Hmm? Mecha vibe. I know he did not just name it. <laughs> oh, no more than just your name. Seems you've forgotten the art of misdirection. Oh! This way, you'll never have to face the wrath of the Kronark. A Kronark. You can't run forever. What's that you were saying about the art of misdirection? Hit snap, snap, snoop. The job's finished. You really want to argue over who gets credit? Yes! <laughs> No, David Carberfield is not currently under Argus's custody. Are you for real right now? If you're asking if I'm a hologram, I can neither confirm. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, Argus and I are headache, cool. They know I'm innocent. I'm trying to get rid of this stupid headache. I need a favor. Fix my head. You're fine. Every dark matter reading I'm seeing is completely normal. I told you so. I know something is off. We can't find anything. Well, then look somewhere else. I don't know what else you want me to do. Sorry. <laughs> I was yelling at Katie. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm going to let you two work this out. Chester and I are going to break open Abracadabra's mysterious tech cuff. Ah. <laughs> uh. This is what I missed. He's trying to pull. Nothing. It's already done. Oh! Oh! What did he do, that guy? Hey. Hey. Save your work. You can finish writing in the beach villa I just rented us in Monaco. He's trying to make up for so much. Cadaver just escaped custody. He's loose somewhere in Argus. Go. No escaping your article or your trauma, Iris. Stand out. It's your last chance. Flash being ruthless. I like it. What the fuck is going on? I'm going to make your whole city disappear. What is going on? Do we have eyes on Kadabra? Uh, yes and no. He's teleporting all over the city with that obelisk ball thing. He created an antimatter bomb. That kind of power, it could take out another Earth. Are we about to have Crisis Part 2? <laughs> no, no, there's not enough antimatter energy for that, thank the sequel gods, but... <laughs> is it enough to destroy the city? I'd say there's exactly enough. Ever said his last trick was to make the whole city disappear. I could use one of my Atlantean plugins to analyze the bomb's outer hole, determine its density, see if you can phase through its surface, and 
It's nth metal. Disarm. The bomb is made of the same material as the obelisks. Pure valorium. An nth metal alloy. Not good. I should have known Cadaver was up to something when we caught him so easily. I just let it happen. Barry, it's gonna be okay. If we can't figure something out, the entire city, millions of lives will be lost because I got tricked. Again. Damn it. It's so funny when you know, like, the pattern of the show. Person walks off, goes to somewhere. We have somebody go and talk to them. Something terrible happened to you. Not because of you. And that kind of trauma, that doesn't go away in a day or a week. You have to face it. Speak it to him or yourself. We are Iris to both. The best part of you. Your heart. And she used it as a weapon against you. That is not your fault. Every time I think I couldn't possibly love you more. You have a family. Somewhere inside of you, there must be a glimmer of light, of hope. Well, I found that light, and then you stole it from me. What? I know why I was doing this. What did he do to steal it, though? Crisis? Embedded inside Abra's annoyingly secure tech cuff. It's a Martian memory restorer. Oh, he remember. How do you know that? Cisco designed it. Whoa, but why? So, Laurel Lance and Mia Queen. Okay, you know what? It's not important. <laughs> the important thing is, I think Cadabra. Hey, hey, no, no, no. If we're not getting the show, I need information about what happened with that shit. So the reason he wants to blow up the city could be in there. Even if it is, it doesn't matter. We don't have time to find it. Maybe that timeline, or this timeline, his family no longer exists. You may be from the future, but the reason that you're here, you're trying to change the past. Thirteen months ago, I started having dreams of a life I never lived. I was so happy. A wife and son that I never knew existed were real. They were erased. You were supposed to vanish in your crisis flash. Not them. I lost everything, just like you will now. Mm. Crisis destroyed countless lives. Now we have to carry on for those who did it. I lost someone too. He was like a brother to me. Ever since I've tried to honor his sacrifice, I'm betting you already tried to go back before Crisis started and you couldn't. That's because that past is from a multiversal world that no longer exists. Killing me won't reset the timeline. That future is gone. Liar. Thing, my pain is yours. Mm -hmm. you want to destroy the city so you can make people suffer like you. You've run all the calculations. You can't comprehend what I've done. Yes, I can. I haven't run a calculation on the timeline yet where they return. How would they feel? The only way for you to heal is to face your trauma. Flash doesn't need big fists. <laughs> it's got a big heart. This isn't me. Barry, whatever's causing these tremors is headed right towards you. What the fuck? Oh, what the hell is that? What the fuck? Am I looking at strength force, maybe? What the fuck? What the? F oh!
What the fuck? What is happening? I mean, I gotta assume that's maybe the strength, somebody that inherited the strength force. There is as much beauty in this life as there is pain. You just have to look for it. We have to look for it within each other. That's gonna take some time. But it is time that we can spend together. Cisco, thank God you're here. Um, you still having those headaches? Nope. Not anymore. They okay, split. Oh! How great is this? Oh God, how's this gonna work? What the fuck? Oh my God, dude. That was... That was a good episode. Of course, we have a little bit of the... Uh, more of the talking the villains out of things. Which I know for a lot of people is going to be the anticlimactic way out of the situation. But... It was alright. I think everything else in this episode was a great build up and pay off to like the emotional side of things. Like the fallout. The emotional fallout from the last season. And I like them as exploring um, the kind of repercussions of that and the emotional impact that that whole experience of being in the mirror verse is affecting not just Iris, but I really like the approach to Iris and how that's affecting her work, affecting her perception of everything that's going on, as well as, you know, their relationship. And Barry, of course feeling this excessive need to make up for everything that he missed, of course, feeling the guilt for not catching that, that he was with a fake Iris. You know, I like the play on not just with them, but like the other survivors and stuff and how it kind of, I don't know. I just really like the approach they took to explaining like how people who were taken felt watching their loved ones be with somebody that wasn't them and then the guilt of the other people that are left behind being helpless and unknowing that they were being manipulated by somebody they should have trusted because they took the appearance of their loved ones um it definitely played very well and i like the pull on back to crisis with abracadabra and his wiped out timeline universe earth if you will um and that being his motivation, I like anytime we get callbacks to stuff like that. And then we had the Laurel and Mia name drop. You know, since we know we aren't getting Green Arrows and the Can uh, Green Arrow and the Canaries now, they didn't decide to pick that show up. That maybe this is a hint that we're going to be getting pieces of that story since that pilot episode left on a cliffhanger. And I would love if they're not going to pick that show up to just address it in one of these shows. The one that makes the most sense would be to do it in Legends of Tomorrow, honestly, because, you know, the time travel aspect of it and her being in the future. So I do hope that happens eventually, but I like the name drop all the same. Falling back to Oliver, the people that were lost in Crisis, that whole thing was a nice little touch. Barry's clearly carrying the weight of his failure again, as he always does. Um, and I like that both him and Iris had this struggle that they both, their union is kind of what, pushed them through it. And then of course we've got this side story with Caitlin and her headaches, which I guess just split frost from her all, all together. So killer frost is just her own being now, which is kind of interesting because the whole alter ego ego has been Caitlin this whole time, even in the comics has been Caitlin, but now it's just like they're two separate beings. And I'm curious how that's going to work long-term if it will if one of them dies so that they don't have to keep doing this, like her switching costumes so periodically like that, and in the same scene, it just seems like they if they're ever in the same room, um, it'd make things kind of difficult to shoot a lot of those scenes. But it I like it. I think they both deserve to have their own freedom. Because them being imprisoned while the other one does the thing, it's like they're each getting half a life. And I've felt like that for a while about it. And I was like this this is the best way to approach it. And I can't wait to see how that, if they follow up on it, how that story uh, peaks out. Um, I do like that. I'm assuming, cause I don't know. He, the, I don't remember the Cronarch cause he said, don't worry, flash the Cronarch or be coming for you for messing with time or something like that. I, I, I don't recognize that name. I mean, Cron, Cronarch, Chrono, whatever. It's not the same thing we've seen before, but it sounded like something different. But of course, Chrono is something to do with time. So 
I don't know what it is. I said use speedsters and messing with time and all that. And then we have this hulked out dude with a ponytail wearing a wrestler's outfit, just kind of jumping in like he is the Hulk and just being able to tank an that antimatter bomb, tank Barry's speed force lightning. Um, of course, he seemed to be invulnerable to all that. And not only that, super strong is big thing. Rah, 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 whatever. I'm wondering, because we saw the lightning, the quakes and all of that. I wonder if he got hit with the strength force. If that's what they're doing. I don't recognize him as a character. I know of this storyline from the comics, if this is the one they are indeed adapting, but I don't know the details of it. I've just heard of it. I've never, I haven't actually gone through and read it myself or even really read about it. I know it has something to do with, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say in case said person or somebody else takes the spot of that person in this, but you can talk about it in the comments if you want. Feel free if you uh, recognize the storyline. Uh, but I'm I'm not going to be the one to put it out there at least. But I've got some ideas and I can't wait to play with this. I um, I like this setup. I like this introduction into this new world, the post, uh, Eva McCulloch world in season seven. And I can't wait to see where we go from here. It's uh, New Horizons. The next episode I, again, because I'm watching these live now. The preview popped up and I was. Well, well, we got some fun stuff next week, it seems like. But um, yeah, what do you guys think of this episode? Sound off in the comments. Let me know down below. We can carry on the conversation after the video. Huge shout out to Mandy Sherritt, who is, of course, a legend of the channel and everybody else who's been sort of, uh, supporting the Patreon. Remember, full unedited reactions are available over there. Or if you become a member here on the channel, uh, it gets you access to those as well. We're covering all the DC shows that are on CW, as well as anything that's going to be coming to HBO Max over the next couple years or however long we do this uh everything over on disney plus all that jazz all that fun stuff pop culture and uh yeah i hope you stick around anyway guys that's it for now thank you all so much i'll catch you guys in the next episode of the flash take care everybody